When you get into quote unquote modern web development, you'll be introduced to a wonderfully confusing world of mysterious config files. A simple project might have an ESLint RC, ESLint Ignore, Editor Config, Prettier Config, Style Lint RC, Vite Config, Tailwind Config, TS Config, Alex RC, and many others. In today's video, we'll take the grand tour of JavaScript config files. What are they? What do they do? And why do I need them? In many open source projects, you'll find an editor config. This file works across virtually any IDE or text editor, and its purpose is to format your code in a consistent way while writing it. In other words, it prevents the default auto formatter in your editor from formatting the code in a way that doesn't match the style of the rest of the project. It's similar to, but not exactly like another tool called Prettier. What it does is actually modify your code by formatting it, usually after you save the file or before you commit it. In the config file, you can set all kinds of different rules, like maybe you want to always use single quotes instead of double quotes in your JavaScript, in which case, if you accidentally use double quotes in your project, the formatter will automatically convert them to single quotes when you trigger the formatter. The idea behind Prettier is to make it impossible to write code that doesn't match your preferred style. Now, one thing I want to point out that makes things extra confusing is that many of these config files can be written in multiple different languages, usually JSON, JavaScript, YAML, or TOML. Right now it's in YAML, but I could easily change it to JavaScript by changing the file name. On top of that, many tooling configs can be embedded directly inside of the package JSON file as well. Now that brings us to ESLint, which also feels very similar to the previous two, but it's concerned with more than just code style. It can statically analyze your project to detect code quality problems. For example, there's a rule called no unused vars that will give you either a warning or error if you have a variable that's never been used. What's kind of confusing is that it can be used with Prettier, but some of their rules may conflict. So in doing that, you usually want to focus on only the code quality rules in ESLint. It works with both JavaScript and TypeScript, and what's also kind of confusing is there used to be a project called TSLint, but it's been dropped in favor of ESLint. Speaking of TypeScript, if you use it, you'll also have a file called a tsconfig. If you're lucky, you might even have multiple tsconfigs. Its job is to control the behavior of the TypeScript compiler. A TypeScript file eventually needs to be transpiled to JavaScript. In the tsconfig, you can determine which files get included, and also the target flavor of JavaScript that you want to compile to, among many other things. Now, the problem with web development is that you can't just compile to JavaScript and use it. You'll need to bundle all of the JavaScript modules into a single file. And for that, you'll need a module bundler like Webpack, Rollup, or Vite, which uses Rollup under the hood. That's going to require at least one more config file that tells the module bundler where to find the source code and what to name the file as the final output. Now, it's important to point out that none of this would have been possible without a package JSON, which is yet another config file where you declare all the different packages that you install from Node Package Manager or NPM. Now, when you install packages using NPM install, it also also creates a package JSON lock. You don't actually modify anything in this file, it just keeps track of all of the exact versions of packages in your project. Because your dependencies have their own dependencies, who 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 have their own dependencies. To make matters more confusing, there's also yarn and pnpm as alternatives, or you can move to an entirely different JavaScript runtime like Dino or Bun if you prefer. You may also want to add a style link config to your project which kind of like ESLint will check for code quality issues in your CSS. Now CSS by itself is too painful, so you'll likely want to use a library like Tailwind. That's going to require one more config file for Tailwind itself, and then another one for post CSS to eliminate all of the unnecessary CSS when you get ready to ship your app to production. Also, you'll likely want to deploy your app somewhere at some point, in which case you'll need a config file from Vercel, Firebase, Netlify, or whatever. These files are used to control the hosting behavior on your server, but before you deploy, you'll want to make sure you do some automated testing. You'll likely need some config files for Cypress or Playwright to do end-to-end -end testing, where your code is tested in a real browser environment, but you may also need to do some unit testing as well for individual chunks of code, and for that you'll need some config files for Jest, Mocha, Karma, Vtest, or whatever testing tool you choose. Now that your code is tested, we of course cannot forget Git. Every project has a Git ignore, so Git knows which files not to include for version tracking in the repo. When we push our code to a public repo, we'll want to implement continuous integration to automatically test and deploy the code as well. For that, we'll need a service like CircleCI or GitHub Actions, which is going to require at least one more config file to tell the CI server how to create an environment to run our code. Now, eventually, as the project grows more complex, we'll likely want to create a mono repo. We can use tools like NX or Turbo Repo, but of course, that's also going to require another config file. I think that pretty much covers the basics. However, the other day I came across a config file that I had never heard of called Alex. What it does is analyze 
penalize your project for profanity, wrong thing, and other offensive language. For example, if you write a comment like, fuck all these config files, I'm gonna go work with my motherfucking cousin who's a garbage man making more money than I do. Alex will warn you that garbage man is gendered language and should be garbage collector instead. That concludes our tour of config files in the JavaScript ecosystem. If you want to learn more about testing and linting, check out a new course from the Full Stack Testing Academy and use this promo code to take 10% off. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.